You technical hitches there. Hello, everybody, <laughs> and welcome to the sixth edition of Amsterdam International Water Week. My name is Ikenna Azwike, and it is my pleasure to be your host once again. Now, you'll be pleased to hear that I'm not the only one who's going to be talking to you today. I have two very special guests with me. The first sitting on my right is the Dutch Minister for Infrastructure and Water Management, Barbara Fisser. Welcome, Barbara. Good morning. And the second is none other than the CEO of Waternet, a man without whom yeah, the AIWW wouldn't really be a reality. And that is Rulof Kraus. Hello, Rulof. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, we'll hear some more from them shortly. But um, first of all, let's find out a little bit more about what's in store over the next couple of days. Um, the theme of this year's conference is Blue Green Deal with Integrated uh, Solutions. Um, so hence the thematic blue fashion choice. Are we liking that? I wear green uh, then. <laughs> Okay, we'll move swiftly <laughs> okay. on. We will move swiftly on, okay? Um, now, I'm sure that uh, all of you have watched a variety of hybrid video conferences over the last 12, maybe even longer uh, period of time, 12 months. Um, but this one, for all of us water nerds, I consider myself an honorary water nerd now, uh, is going to knock your socks off. So get ready, all right? We have three sub-themes this year. The first is uh, clean water and ecosystem restoration. The next is reuse, reuse, recycle and recover. And the last is risks and resilience. As you might expect, we've got a variety of uh, inspirational um, international experts who are going to be uh, sharing their ideas with you. Um, regional sessions. We'll cover everything from uh, Asia through to North and South America. Um, uh, the cross-cutting themes of finance and smart water will be evident uh, across all of the sessions. And we've also asked session leads to really focus on, uh, on innovation um, and emphasize intersectoral collaboration. So uh, um, uh, there's a lot in store for you. And of course, for you at home, Please join us, join this conversation. Use uh, the platform that you've logged in on to ask questions to our panelists uh, here today and to connect with one another. Um, we really can't do this uh, without your help as well. We are all part of the solution. Okay, um, in other words, it, it is raining themes, okay, and constructive discussions over the next couple of days. Um, so, uh, yeah, get ready to listen to lots of inspirational people. And talking about inspirational people, my first uh, guest who I'd like to go to is um, Hashmik uh, uh, Bersagian. Barsegian. Oh, I practiced this. <laughs> I'm sorry, Hasmik. I'm sorry. Barsegian. You can see her at home. Okay, Hasmik is. Let me take a breath. Okay. President of the European Youth Parliament for Water, board member of the International Secretariat for Water, a member of the World Energy Council, and she's a party delegate from Armenia to COP26 in Glasgow. You're a very busy woman, Hasmik. Hello, everyone. It's, it's, it's a pleasure for me to be here and to assist to this very important event. And uh, yeah, the time now I have, I'm having busy times here in Glasgow, and I'm very excited to be part of this uh, uh, of this action, this activities. Give us a little taste of what, what's Glasgow like at the moment, Hasmik. Is, is there a positive spirit? We're seeing pictures of protests online and um, uh, the ministers uh, and world leaders trying to be ambitious. What's the, what, what, what are you taking away from that? Yeah, uh, I was, before this uh, COP conference, I was to the conference of youth, the COI 16 conference, that we had also another gathering in Milan uh, one month ago for the pre-COP pre -COP event. So youth already, already expressed their, their opinion and their commitment and uh, what they require from world leaders. We had meetings with the presidency of COP to, to give them our statement, our vision, and the presidency expressed their um, their willingness and their commitment to find a solution that and to to reach to to um, to a common common statement uh, from all the parties. So there is already the commitment from from the presidency and the world leaders needs to be really very ambitious and uh, and. Uh, uh, and, po and politically commit to that. Yeah. Um, in this moment, today and tomorrow, I are the world leaders forum. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we, uh, in the upcoming hours, we will see what what is their 
what is their opinion and what are they committed to. And the COP, you know, is always a surprise. And uh, now nowadays, the question for us, especially for you, is that is the timing. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And talking yeah. about timing, we've got to move on, I'm afraid, Hasmik. But it sounds like it's uh, we are. Um, there's a positive spirit. Um, today is very important. Um, and uh, uh, the world leaders are not the only ones who have to be ambitious. The water sector has to be ambitious. And you're here to read a statement, right? Tell us, what is that statement? Sure. Of course, it's an honor for me to launch a statement on behalf of the 16th Amsterdam International Water Week. Green deals across the globe require water to interconnect sectors, actions, actors, and sustainable development goals. The addition of blue in the green deals and programs can interconnect regions, basins, sectors, communities, practices, and policies. The integration will accelerate actions and facilitate a transition towards sustainable, resilient, and adaptive pathways to build back better. With continuous innovation, data-driven tools, stewardship and inclusion. Together, we can transform the state of water challenges and initiate a shift toward the solutions-driven paradigm. We need to invest in solutions with resources and collaborative actions and find a common language using water as a catalyst, learn from challenges, disasters, pandemics, climate exacerbated changes, and accelerate our ambitions with integrated water solutions. Integrating water is the thread connecting humanity and the environment. I invite all the participants in the session to read the full statement. It's, it will be available in all it's available in all UN languages and let us know what can be added from your experience. Share your opinions, suggestions and remarks via the chat function that we have by the end of the session and we'll incorporate in the final version which will be released on Thursday. So this is our collective statement, and we, we want it to be to, that our collective voice to be heard. So make your voice heard. Thank you very much, Hasmik. Very clear. I mean, from my point of view, just just briefly, because I know you have to rush off as well, and we've got to continue with the program here. Um, it's a very noble sounding statement. I mean, I'm circling words here: build back better. I heard that quite a lot. We need to invest. Also heard that. Um, find a common language, it's uh, another popular term. We've heard a lot of statements, we need radical action now. What difference is this AIWW statement gonna make, really? <laughs> yeah, thank you for this, for this question. First of all, this statement shows the commitment of different, of many water organizations from Europe and from all other parts of the world. So uh, this is, first of all, a commitment and a demand. So these two are together, and we need to acknowledge this, this importance. And secondly, you know, when you want to build a, a house, you always you put stone on, on other stone. You cannot build a house just with one stone. This statement is a, is a big stone that will help to, uh, to achieve our goals. Okay, thank you very much. And I wish you all the best today, and to all of your colleagues there in Glasgow. Thank you for joining us, Hasmik. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Okay, um, you heard me mention them briefly. Barbara Fisser, the Dutch Minister for Infrastructure and Water Management, and Rulof Kraus, the CEO of Waternet. Let me go to you, first of all, uh, Barbara. You recently became the Dutch Minister. Yeah. Um, so you've had to hit the ground uh, running very much. Yeah, Tell eight me, weeks. Eight, so. <laughs> <laughs> eight weeks. Wow, okay. Not very, not very long. Baptism of fire. <laughs> yeah. Baptism of fire. Um, do, have you had time, though, to consider, I mean, let's talk about this conference. What would your... What would you? What would your ideal outcome be? In concrete terms for this over the next two days. Uh, what Hesmik just said was, re I think, very positive. Uh, as she said uh, and mentioned, we should do this step by step, building a house stone by stone. Uh, the Netherlands is uh, well known around the world for uh, water management and how we adapt to water. This summer we had large floods in the south of the Netherlands and I was also there speaking to people who live there. And if you see what, uh, is, what has happened to them and they are now insecure about their houses, when they can return. And uh, we have done a lot, we invest a lot in the Netherlands, but still in the Netherlands we have to do this every day. And I know that the CEO also stated last week that he uh, is concerned about not having enough water in Amsterdam for the future. So. 
it's a topic which has to be addressed. And I hope that this week, uh, with all the knowledge that we have in the Netherlands, but around the world, we can bring this together and not speaking about the future, but uh, speaking about next week. Mm -hmm. What can we do next week? Uh, how can we help each other? What solutions do we have? Uh, what do you need from us? Uh, what is your problem? And what are the solutions? How can we help you? So just concrete and doing it stone by stone, as yeah. uh, Hasmik uh, just mentioned. And, and globally, do you see a role for the Netherlands in, in kind of yeah, taking global leadership when it comes to water? Yeah, because we are talking a lot about mitigation, climate mitigation, but the Netherlands stated that we want to take a leadership role in adaptation, climate adaptation. So how should you build your cities? How should you be adaptive? Uh, and uh, we're now in Amsterdam. Uh, the city of Amsterdam is also prominently uh, investing, uh, want to invest in this, but also a big city as Rotterdam is also leading uh, in this subject. And we think that not only mitigation, but that's what you have to do also now for tomorrow, but adaptation is crucial in every city in, in Europe, but also mm. in the rest of the world. But don't you get the sense that, I mean, adaptation is crucial, uh, we've got biodiversity loss, we've got floods and droughts, uh, climate mitigation you also mentioned. I mean, you're in charge, but it's so, it's so intimidating. Like, where do you start? How, how do you go about prioritizing? It, it is large and it is big. And if you, uh, but it's also, uh, it, it, it's a great opportunity to work on because I think if you can have the uh, opportunity now to work on this, it, it's great. And I think in Europe, and I know that you have Diedrich Samson uh, after this, uh, Frans Timmermans, uh, the commissioner, uh, he put forward uh, an, an ambitious uh, climate uh, package, Fit for 55. It's not a fitness program. We had a <laughs> debate last week in <laughs> parliaments and every, every parliamentarian <laughs> was talking about fitness program, Fit for 55. <laughs> you could put it to Mr. Timmermans and uh, uh, maybe they could get the like wrong. Yeah, yeah. Everybody said, also mentioned, <laughs> but I'm not going to discuss this anymore. <laughs> But it, it, it's, I think that uh, if you want to do this, that you have to do, start it in Europe. We can do this also together if we work together. You have a level playing field, which is very important for all the older companies that have to invest because mm. they have to take the step 30 years ahead. Mm. Uh, we need large investments, but it also needs stability. So the governments in Europe should uh, commit to this goal mm -hmm. and also the goals to 2030, 2050 and be stable because the, if you want to do this tra transformation for people and for companies, they want to know what is lying ahead, mm. what is the goal and how are you going to help me to do this transformation. And I think that's what we as a government need to do yeah. to help those people and to help uh, companies to transform. And, uh, and be very ambitious. And in, be ambitious also. In um, uh, leveling that playing yeah. field. So, yeah. Because there are some companies. In Europe, internationally, because if you're looking at uh, the airlines, that's not only Europe, that's yep. internationally. Yep. If you're looking at the maritime sector, that's not only Europe, that's, that's internationally. So, But if we can start in Europe and then do this discussion in ICAO, in mm -hmm. IMO, the international conferences, that's, that would be help, very helpful. Okay. All right, before we hear from you, Mr. Krause, um, let's go to you, because you've referenced Diederik uh, Samson, who is the uh, head of cabinet for Executive Vice President Franz Timmermans um, for the European Green Deal at the European Commission. Um, I, he's unfortunately not able to join us live, but he did record uh, a message earlier today to flesh out in a bit more detail what is the, uh, this blue-green deal all about. Thank you for inviting me to the Amsterdam International Water Week. I would have loved to be with you in person today, but I'm grateful for the opportunity to share a few thoughts this way. While the COP26 summit in Glasgow is just kicking off, our plans to tackle the climate crisis and the less spoken about biodiversity crisis have a clear and big objective. Nothing less than to secure the very survival of humanity. And to make that happen, we need to bring our societies back to within the planetary boundaries. Water and its quality, quantity and access to it is one of the key indicators of success or failure of these efforts. Over the last decades, Europe has made tremendous progress on water management, 
thanks to comprehensive legislation, sustained investment and increased awareness of our dependence to it. But even the very advanced and strong society in the EU still crosses those lines. Quite a lot, actually. A better half of water bodies does not have the quality it needs to have. Pollution from industry and agriculture persists. Threats from the climate crisis are accelerating, as last summer showed once again. With the European Green Deal, we put green and blue firmly in the middle of everything we do. We have set out a zero pollution ambition for 2050. We need to reduce water pollution to levels which are no longer harmful to us and to nature. We need to create a toxic free environment. I like to see this as an opportunity, not just for our own survival, but also for innovation and the right kind of investments. Our food systems are a major consumer of water and yet they are also a key source of water pollution. Member States now have a massive chance to start fixing the overuse and the abuse of water with their national plans to spend the 387 billion of the common agricultural policy. Let's make that count. Innovative and circular solutions need to help us with reusing water. We need to properly extract nutrients from water because they have a value. And if we don't do that, they will continue damaging our ecosystems. We also need to make a better use of new technology. Earth observation provides us with better, more easily accessible data on pollution, biodiversity and on carbon storage. In consequence, we, or actually you, can take action at national level and at local level, which is more targeted and therefore more effective. I really hope that the Amsterdam International Water Week will be a fascinating one and that you will work together to find answers and solutions to our future. Let me wish you a very successful event. Now, thank you very much, Mr. Samson. Mm. Um, Rulof, uh, you heard those words, we need to be ambitious. Um, is Waternet being uh, as ambitious as it can? Uh, yes, Waternet is ambitious, but it can also be always be more. Uh, we have a great challenge and we have a lot of uh, challenges uh, to face. And uh, I'm very honored uh, that we can host this Amsterdam International Water Week because uh, we need to work together. You can't do it alone. You need to work together between utilities, cities and industry. And that's one of the aims of this International Water Week. Yeah, I mean, it's also a lot of responsibility to bring the world water community here to Amsterdam. That's, that's quite a statement of intent. Yes, and especially this sixth edition is uh, more difficult because we do it online, mm -hmm. but we do also face-to-face uh, -face in the Rai exhibition on Thursday and Friday. So yes, it's quite a job, but uh, it, the, the goal is worldwide eh, because it's very important that we step forward now. Yeah. And uh, on a personal level, as CEO of Waternet, uh, I asked Barbara the same question. What do you hope this conference is going to achieve in, in concrete terms? Yeah, I really hope that uh, uh, the challenges and the solutions from cities, industry and utilities come together, that we exchange the ideas, uh, concrete solutions, and that we uh, built on this global network. We started with the first Amsterdam International Water Week. We're working together with Stockholm, we're working together with Singapore. And so one uh, global community which is working for concrete solutions for this, uh, to achieve the sustainable development goals in 2030. And talking about solutions and the challenges you've, we face, um, you have a, a short presentation. Yes, I like uh, to give a short presentation just to introduce uh, the host city and the host utility for this Amsterdam International Water Week. But I will do it brief. Take it away. And how many professionals are coming to Amsterdam this week? To, because, as you said, at this moment, uh, we are about 1,500. 1,500. Yeah. Uh, both yeah. online yeah. And, and, and in life. But uh, the uh, Aquatech uh, exhibition, in which we work together, they will attract more than 10,000 people. Wow. So, there are a lot of uh, water professionals in Amsterdam this week. So, yeah. lots of solutions also to <laughs> discuss. So. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. Well, Waternet is, uh, is a unique uh, utility in the Netherlands because we're working for two uh, governmental bodies, the city of Amsterdam and the water board Amstelgooi en Vecht. 
uh, and it includes all the tasks of the water cycle. And I think that's very important because you need a holistic approach for all the different challenges we have. And we also have a daughter organization, which is World WaterNet. And that's special because through World WaterNet, we're working international. And we try to uh, exchange the knowledge and experience of WaterNet with a lot of organizations abroad. <clears throat> and on the map, I show you the water operated partnerships uh, we have. The ministry uh, has uh, Waterworks, a Blue Deal, uh, important international cooperation uh, programs. And we are working on that. And here you see the organizations which we work together. <clears throat> Sorry. And representatives of these organizations are in Amsterdam this week mm -hmm. as far as possible to, uh, to travel. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's important, this integrated approach, because it means that the goals we set, it should be efficient, it should be sustainable, and it should be customer-driven. And WaterNet exists now for 15 years. It started in 2006. And we can really say that this holistic approach is an approach which we like to promote, eh? to promote to others and work together with others. Uh, we have a lot of challenges, and we have six uh, research and innovation teams which are dealing with these challenges. The minister already said that climate adaptation is very important. Uh, so do we believe. We have Amsterdam Rainproof has started. Uh, what do we do with heavy rainfall? But we are also uh, facing drought. Water quality is very important. New substances uh, which uh, we have to deal with, which we have to treat in our treatment systems. The energy transition, Amsterdam wants to become a green city. And aquathermy, eh, taking the cold and the heat from the drinking water, the surface water, the groundwater, the wastewater, can be a, a large distribution to becoming uh, a green city. Mm -hmm. uh, circular economy is very important. Uh, we no look, longer look at wastewater treatment as wastewater treatment, but as, as resource recovery. Data and censoring are very important uh, because uh, uh, through data we know. Uh, uh, one of the examples is that we can predict COVID uh, by looking into the wastewater uh, system. And soil subsidence is very important. We are here in an area below sea level. The sea level is rising. The soil uh, don't have to go down. Mm. So that's an old, another important uh, issue. A lot of things to do which you want to share with others in the, this International Water Week. Uh, we do it with international utilities. Uh, you see uh, these utilities here on, uh, on the screen. Their representatives are here this week. We learn from them. They can learn from us. And uh, what I said, we're working together with cities. Of course, the city of Amsterdam, but also with other cities. Because you can't do it alone. Utilities, cities have to work together. And also, industry should be a part of it. And here you see two examples. We're making a calcium out of our drinking water, which is now used in cosmetics. And uh, we take the phosphate out of the wastewater, which is used in fertilizers. So we make products which the industry can help us further. So that's just some examples of this local utility. And uh, I hope that during the International Water Week, we get a lot of more ideas and we can share our ideas with our international guests. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any initial reflections, Barbara? I've got some uh, questions I'm, I'm, of my own. I'm curious because, as I stated uh, last week, there was a very concerning. Uh, you said you express your concerns about not having enough water for the city of Amsterdam yeah. in the coming years. Maybe you can address that a little bit more because everybody thinks the Netherlands can do anything mm. on water. But as you said, you have yes, big concerns. Yes, uh, through uh, the last 20 years, our uh, drinking water production was enough. Uh, two thirds of the drinking water is taken from the River Rhine. It's uh, infiltrated in the dunes and there we produce the water and the other uh, one third is coming from uh, the province of Utrecht. But we see the city is growing. And because of the growing of the city, we need to uh, increase our production uh, facilities. So uh, we just said we have to start now, 
because you need licenses, you need new technologies, uh, you want to increase, uh, you want to put innovations uh, when you increase your production uh, facility. So that was, uh, we said, we have to start now to, uh, to, to meet with the growing city. So wh when is that? I mean, do Amsterdam is getting being born now have any worries at all, or you know, how quickly are you going to get that in place? Uh, well, you're on the spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm on the spot. Uh, I certainly believe that we can manage, huh? but we are in time. Yeah. Uh, we say uh, we have to uh, to act now because in five to ten years uh, it won't be enough. But it's not too late. We start now. Yeah. And you mentioned a few innovations there. Um, which is there one that stands out for you? One that you think, as CEO of Waternet, you know, really puts a fire in the belly. Like, <laughs> that's that's amazing that that's happening. Yes, of course, we have a lot of innovations, but I still like that we uh, softening the water, so we take out the calcium from the drinking yeah. water. And uh, originally we had a sand core, so we couldn't use it. It has to go to a disposal, and now we replaced it through calcium. And it's used in face scrub, in cosmetics. Mm. So what better could you do? Mm. So it really creates value. Yeah. OK, but let's, um, how, how inclusive are, are solutions like that? You know, I look at the, the World Waternet uh, map in the terms of the collaborations that you have, uh, and it raises two questions for me. One is, how do you go about um, making those international international collaborations? Like, does someone need to literally pick up a phone, contact Martin, and say, "Hey, we want to <laughs> collaborate"? How does that go? Because it's like two or three across Africa, two in South America. There seems to be so much more potential there. But the other question is, yeah, how realistic is it for some of the the, the best innovations to be incorporated in? Uh, other parts of the world who have limit with limited resources, for instance. But that first one about how do you go about collaborations? Well, uh, the Amsterdam International Water Week started 12 years ago, yeah, and uh, that was a, a good stimulation to meet each other. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of international cooperation. I'm sure the minister will know, and the Netherlands uh, are stimulating this uh, international uh, cooperation. Uh, and we looked uh, really which utilities have more or less the same challenges. And we came to Paris, to Berlin, to Singapore. Uh, and it should be mutual. They should uh, learn from us, but we should also learn from them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, we set up programs uh, 10, five years ago, and they were successful, so we continue these uh, programs. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, uh, our former major, Ewart van der Laan, he went all around the world telling uh, that Ajax was uh, a very good uh, <laughs> thing of the city, but also uh, Waternet. <laughs> yeah, always the case, uh, was always in his uh, team uh, going around the world to Hanoi, to Beijing, to Mumbai. And he was so enthusiastic that people said, oh, we want to learn from that. Wow, so it's a great export product. Uh, yeah. Yeah. In the footsteps of Ajax, <laughs> <laughs> following behind. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and about you know, the innovations which sound great over here, but poorer parts of the world might not be able to... Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yes, of course, you should uh, very much look to the local, uh, to the local situations. The but uh, who s thought that we should face drought, eh, as you yeah. mentioned? Yeah. No one 10 years ago, I think. So we can learn from Mediterranean countries which face drought already for a long time. Absolutely. I think that's really important to emphasize at the conference that regionally across the world, there are parts of the world which who've been dealing with these problems. And uh, in different contexts, I recently did something with mental health. And there, people are way far further ahead because they're used to dealing with crises. Yeah. Um, and over here, you know, drought or, or COVID, maybe we were, there are things that we can learn anyway. Um, but Barbara, from the ministry's point of view, another phrase that we hear a lot is um, leave no one behind. So we're talking about this, the Netherlands taking a leadership, global leadership role. How can we ensure the Netherlands also doesn't leave anyone behind? I'm here. <laughs> that, that, that's also uh, a proof to, uh, to let the world know that, that we still 
uh, have ambitions mm. that we're uh, still uh, also learning ourselves because, as you said, we're still the Netherlands is facing lots of problems uh, if it comes to water management. So we have to learn also from each other. Uh, I've, in my first week as minister, the king opened up the global adaptation center in Rotterdam. Uh, we had an uh, international conference at the beginning of this year with also the global leaders on climate adaptation. So that's really a major issue for us that we want to uh, learn from other countries, but also to uh, bring other countries our knowledge and to work uh, closely together. And we're working closely with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We have an international program where we uh, finance projects worldwide. Uh, we have uh, strong bonds with uh, countries like Bangladesh, uh, with India, uh, who are facing uh, Indonesia challenges. Uh, which are so big that they cannot handle it themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's in knowledge, it's in uh, financing, because it's so big. So mm -hmm. uh, we want to support that also, because we have the universities, uh, we, have the we have everything here which we want to bring in those countries to help them. Yep. But as I said, we also have to learn a lot. So I'm, that's why I uh, want to uh, promote this week, because mm -hmm. here are people worldwide bringing in their knowledge, bringing in their solutions. And what a big challenge for the Netherlands is, uh, and that's what we, st we have started also, is nature-based solutions. Because I think yeah. uh, where uh, nature is always right. Mm -hmm. You cannot argue with nature. <laughs> <laughs> so nature is always right. So how you can adapt with nature uh, to have, uh, if you have problems with too much water or not enough yeah. water or dirty water. Yeah. <laughs> and that are the three problems. Are so I hope to hear, hear from people here how they can help us with uh, yeah. those three. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any nature-based solutions that you're particularly proud of, uh, like incorporating yeah. your water net? Yes, well, one of the uh, of the uh, examples, uh, which is already for a very long time, because Amsterdam started its drinking water in, in 1852, it was the first drinking water company in, in the Netherlands. And we used the clean water from the dunes. Yeah, it was the rainwater was filter, filtrated in the dunes and it was uh, good and clean water and it helped uh, protecting against diseases which were in that time here in the city. And when uh, the consumption uh, raised, we pumped water from the River Rhine mm. into, the, into the dunes to use that uh, that capacity and that uh, filtration capacity, and uh, also in uh, in China in the in Dainang, uh, we helped them with artificial recharge, so that they uh, could fill the groundwater level uh, to the level uh, it should be. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the examples of nature-based, I think. Okay. But there are many, many examples. Um, now, I also mentioned that uh, we're going to give our audience the opportunity to ask questions. We've got a question here. Uh, I think this one is um, uh, for you, Rulof, I would say. Um, Enoch uh, Kimin, uh, Kiminta asks, there's a lot of focus um, on water coming out of the taps and zero attention to water sources leaving the fresh water resources unattended in terms of catchment uh, con conservation. Why is this? Do you follow that question? <laughs> Not really. Sorry. Um, <laughs> well, I guess the uh, we we're, foc we're we're focused on on water coming out of this t the taps um, and not talking about perhaps using fresh water to to help um, catchment con conservation or conservation with that. No. Enoch, oh, sorry, try uh, again. <laughs> we're struggling. We're struggling with that question. We're struggling. Sorry. Um, but the other thing I wanted to ask is we've got a CEO of a water utility here. We've got the minister responsible for uh, helping finance initiatives. Make some magic happen. <laughs> what, what, what is it? What, what are you looking for even more support from the ministry on? Well, we have a lot of support from the ministry. Don't and, be too uh, diplomatic. Uh, no, now. no, Come I on. don't. Come but uh, <laughs> we have. Uh, I think it's it's great. The uh, waterworks and the Blue Deal are great projects, which uh, the, the government supported with 50% uh, subsidy, um, working on this water operated partnerships. I really believe that uh, a one-to-one -one uh, cooperation between a water company 
uh, in a developing country and a water company in the Netherlands could really help. So uh, please con continue Why? that, uh, Why make that it bigger. Really <laughs> Why could that really help? Because uh, you have a longer uh, relationship, it's not one project, eh? you have a longer relationship. Together you make a film of the situation and it's their decision, it's what they want. And uh, mm. not, we are not telling you should do that or you should do that, no, it's really working mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year more than 100 employees of, of Waternet are involved in this uh, World Waternet uh, program. Uh, unfortunately, only online, but mm -hmm. even online it uh, it worked. But, uh, well, that's great. You see uh, great results. Okay. Yeah. So you'd like even more support from the Ministry for the World Water Net project? Actually? Yeah, and I and thank you very much uh, for supporting this Amsterdam International Water Week uh, by being here, mm -hmm. but also by sponsoring us and give us the opportunity mm -hmm. to uh, organize this, uh, this conference. Okay. There's another uh, question that's come in about the Amsterdam agreements. Um, can you tell us what those are briefly? And uh, <laughs> would you highlight one during this AIWW event? The Amsterdam agreements, that was an idea on the fifth edition, that uh, we don't stop uh, at the end of the week, but that uh, people who uh, met each other say, we sign an agreement that we work the, la the next two years mm -hmm. uh, towards the, the next Amsterdam edition on a, sp on a certain project, on a certain uh, program. Uh, and uh, they really present uh, their programs here during this Amsterdam International Water Week. Right. And I think it would be too far to mention them, but there were about 10. Mm -hmm. well, those were agreements from previous conferences? From with the last conference, and they worked on it, and they, okay, so uh, now they're bringing they back highlighted the it now. Yeah, because we don't want to have this cooperation in one week, no. mm. but we have a global, Long -term, com global yeah. community. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, any final remarks? Barbara, it sounds like we're very hopeful. To no, but, but I, th I think what, what is, uh, I think uh, the success of the Netherlands is the re relationship, the corpor cooperation that we have within the sector. Uh, it's from its history from the Netherlands, uh, 800 <laughs> years ago, <laughs> uh, but it's still there. It's still strong. Uh, we trust each other and we have long-term commitments. So all the programs that we do, are looking forward 30 years, 50 years, 70 years. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the basis in water management that you uh, you have to work tomorrow for the solutions for over 70 years. So you have to bring knowledge together so you can uh, do research on what is happening in climate yeah. change and what impact will it have on enough water or yeah. too much water or dirty water. And uh, I think that's the success of the Netherlands that we can bring those all those parties together to have a commitment, not only for a year, not only for two years. Uh, so it's not only looking at the financing, but it's a uh, commitment for uh, goals within 30, 50 years. And if you have those goals, then you will also find the financing because you have agreed on those goals. So everybody is committed to bring in what they can do. So I think uh, if people ask me, what is the success of the Netherlands? I think that's the key of our success, yeah. that we're willing to bring in this commitment, uh, not for today or tomorrow, but over 50 yeah. years. And that's really important. And do you think um, like the private sector also embraces this long-term thinking? Yeah, it, yeah they because do. They, they can invest because they know what their goals are. Mm -hmm. If you know what the goals are, uh, because you're not going to invest every year in a new machine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do that every 15 years. And if you know what the government and the sector wants, then you have to clear goal and if you have a clear goal then you can invest but if a government is changing the goals every year <laughs> mm. and there's no long-term uh, commitment then you're not going to invest in the yeah. private sector so that's why I was uh, focusing on also what Diedrich Samson said uh, we're now with this package that is lying uh, from the European Commission it's really important that's why we said as Dutch government uh, of course we have some questions about some things in, in, in the Fit for 55 program as every country has but uh, the commitment to say this is what we want to achieve and every sector has to do something that's really important because then we know everybody has to do something and there's a long-term commitment.
Absolutely. Now, and that uh, is a pretty strong note to end on, I think. There is a long-term commitment. Yeah. We know we have to roll up our sleeves and do the work. But, um, yeah, I think it's fair to say that the pattern of, of what's been happening, commitments, um, earlier this year we started with the Climate uh, Adaptation Summit in January, um, and that brought together um, uh, a thousand cities uh, through the Adapt Now program um, to, to encourage uh, governments and specialists to really collaborate. The pattern is positive. So we're moving in the right direction, and I hope that we can use this two days, the next two days, um, to build on, on all of that and, and focus on, on solutions for the long term. Um, thank you all for joining us. Um, the couple of questions. Sorry, Enoch, you've got to <laughs> do some work on that question drafting. I apologize, but you need to keep working on that. If you um, send me a mail, I will answer yeah. it. <laughs> oh, what a lovely diplomat there, diplomatic answer. Send an email, please. Um, so thank you all for joining us. Um, do share your thoughts on the Amsterdam International Water Week 2021 statement. Don't forget about that. Uh, contribute. Um, and uh, uh, they will be crafted into the final document that gets sent to COP26. Um, don't forget the in-person conference uh, tomorrow and the Integrated Leaders Forum. Um, there are still places left, so do register for that. Uh, my name is Iken Nazwike. Thank you very much to my guests here. Um, we wish you a lovely rest of the conference. See you again soon. <laughs>